1969, legendary country music star Johnny Cash recorded a hit song named The Boy Named Sue. It was a humorous song that brought a lot of laughs, I think, at Folsom Prison, where it was originally recorded. But if you listen to the lyrics, it's, a, it's also a story. It's a story of a broken family, of a young boy given the name by his father, and he was all his life, he was given this name, Sue. And, uh, and the father, as a young boy, the father went ahead and took off and left his responsibilities as a husband and as a father. And so this young boy grew up with this name, Sue. And uh, you could tell it was a troubled home. And both the father and the son were trying to find peace in their life. Um, and the father thought, you know, if I go ahead and I abandon my responsibilities, all these things stirred inside of me, I can perhaps find, find peace just out there by walking away from my problems. And the son, carrying bitterness all of his life, thought, I can find peace if I find that man that gave me that name, Sue. And eventually the two of them made up, they came to blows, and they walked away from each other. And honestly, I don't think either one really walked away with any more peace than they had before. That's the story of what it's like in a lot of people's lives today. Uh, the story um, is an example of some of the troubles we have in our families across America and around the world. But beyond that, it's a story of people that uh, are trying to find and make peace with themselves, with burdens and, and uh, divisions and things like that they carry within their heart. What I want to talk with you about today's program is, is the program is titled The Search for Peace. Maybe you're carrying something today that uh, within your family or your personal life, work life, whatever it might be, your finances that are stirring deep inside of you and you're trying to find peace with it. Well, I want to share with you a story out of the Bible that I can believe help you find peace. And it's a story, a made-up story, that a man named Jesus made. And the, and the name of the story that is, a, is called the story of the prodigal son found in the Bible. This story has uh, brought great help to my own life. I've read it many, many times. And every time I read it, um, it's uh, very, it has made an impact upon my life. And as I thought about what to bring for today's program, I thought the story of the prodigal son could be a great encouragement uh, to you today. And Charles Dickens, the great novelist of another century, read this story and made a comment that he thought this was one of the greatest uh, pieces of literature of short story that has ever been written, ever been told. So I'd like to turn and read to you out of the Bible uh, this story. And uh, in the Bible, it's found in the, in the gospel of what is called the Gospel of Luke. So here's the story of the prodigal son. There was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the, son, and, the, and the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son was dead, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now, his older son was in the field, and he came and drew near to the house, and heard music and dancing. He called to one of the servants and asked what these things meant. 
And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf because received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. And his father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you. I have never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, he said, came who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, the father, Son, you're always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad. For this brother, this brother of yours, was found dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. Now, as we uh, unfold this story, this story is uh, it's set as a father, a single father, raising two young adult boys still living at home. The story makes no mention of a mother. We have no idea what happened to her. And they appear to be a wealthy Jewish family, large farm operation with hired farm hands helping out, and they appear to be a fairly uh, a loving family. The father appears to be a loving father that's striving and working hard to take care of his boys and, uh, and appears to be doing well. But even though all that is going well on the surface, beneath the surface there's something stirring in the heart of the younger son. The younger son comes one day and comes to his father and says, Father, I want my share of the inheritance and I want it today. Now, in Jewish customs, that was an offense because in Jewish days, as in our days, typically inheritance are, are to be given after, uh, like the parents, pass away. And then there's usually a will or something and it shows how everything's to be distributed after the death has occurred. But in this case, he didn't want to wait until his dad passed away. In essence, what he was saying without saying it was this, is, Dad, I wish you were dead. And he also didn't include his older brother in this conversation. So he basically told his dad, I wish you were dead, and then on top of that, dissed his one and only older brother. Now, obviously, there was something stirring in the heart of this younger son for some time. It has started boiling up. We don't know what it is, but it came to the surface, and he exploded. And he exploded and asked for this offensive request and left town. Here's a point I want to make about this, is that we all have things that stir within us like this younger son. Maybe today you have something stirring inside of you. But what do we do with this? What do we do with this? This younger son, his reaction was to blow up and to try to run away from his problems. We don't know if he had a problem with his father, with his, younger, with his older brother, something at home, something in the community. But somehow in his mind he thought, if I can just get away, if I can just run and leave, I can find peace with my problems. Have you ever felt like that before? Where if I can just run and get away and hide, that somehow my problems will go away. Jesus made this comment one time. He, said, he talked about peace and he said, that in me you can find peace. And in that comment, in that same statement, he also said, in this world there will be tribulations or troubles. But he says, even in the midst of all these troubles, in me you can find peace. Jesus acknowledged that in our world we will have problems. But he said, even in the midst of these problems, you can find peace. Peace if you come to me. Now our world is filled with many religions many kinds of philosophies and our world was filled with all kinds of activities and all kinds of things to try to grab people's attention but nothing in our world can truly grant peace in the midst of the storms of life like Christ and so I urge you today don't be like that younger son and try to run and hide but don't run uh, don't run away from your problems run to Jesus and he can grant you peace today Thank you.